Good evening, everyone. Susan Campfield here with SueStampfield.com. How are you? You know what? I bet I don't have my microphone plugged in. Oh, my goodness. How are you? Welcome to my craft room. My name is Susan Campfield. We're casual here, as you can see. Um, we're going to just uh, create with some paper and stamps and ink tonight. We're going to make a beautiful card. I trust that we will. I have no idea what it's going to look like. Okay, hopefully we're, we're better now with the sound. You're not late, Marsha. Yay. <laughs> so welcome. So glad to see you all here. Um, my name is Susan Campfield. I love to make cards. And the thing I love about making cards is that we can make the card, send it to someone and brighten their day. So it's a great way to spread kindness um, and just show people that we care right? So it means a lot. I know it seems like such a little thing, but getting that handmade card in the mail and just knowing that somebody thought enough about you to make a card for you, it's pretty powerful. So together, we're doing great things. You guys are awesome. Thank you for making and sending cards. A um, couple things I wanted to just mention. We're going to be, uh, I love to, to share inspiration and hopefully creatively inspire you so that you can make more cards to send. Um, I also send out free project sheet emails. You can subscribe at SueStampfield.com. And uh, so I went out last week. The next one um, is going to be a, a faux step fold card project sheet along with something else. Don't know what yet. We're going to do another uh, faux step fold card tonight. We did one in the last video. This one's going to be a little bit different. I don't know what it's going to look like. You guys are going to vote and we're going to figure it out together. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get this party started. So I'm going to switch my camera. Let me know in the comments what's in your cup. So I am a messy crafter. I have ice water in my cup. That's my favorite. And uh, yeah, I'm messy and I make a mess. So um, we play a little game when I lose something, which I always do, always. Uh, when I lose something um, and I find it again, we say found it and we all take a sip of whatever is in your cup. So let me know what is in your cup. Mickey's got Coke Zero tonight. Mary's got ice uh, water. Right. That's down my, right up my lane there. Uh, shout out to my moderator, Jennifer Walsh. She's hanging out in the comments here on YouTube or you might be over watching on Facebook. Hey, Facebook friends. Uh, my Sue Stampfield Facebook group. I post a lot of um, uh pictures from the projects that we make and sometimes some of the alternates I make after the video. So anyone is welcome to join me over on the Sue Stampfield Facebook group. Um, Jennifer is in the comments. If you have a question, uh, you can do that uh, at symbol and type in Jennifer and her name will pop up and she can help flag me down or she might be able to answer your question too. She knows a lot of stuff. Green tea with ginseng and honey. That sounds amazing. Bubbly for Susan. Uh, I, I, is that champagne bubbly or sparkling water? Because I like both. Well, I don't really like champagne. I like sparkling water, though. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and flip the camera here. Let's see if it's going to work today. Yay, it's going to work today. Woohoo. Uh, all right, so, mm, well, this is the card we made last time. This is the faux step fold. We actually made this one. So it's tented. It stands up for display like that. And on this one, you guys voted for designer paper at the bottom. So we used the scrap that was left over from this piece. This is the One Horse Open Sleigh Designer Series paper. It's a new uh, product. It's not in any catalog from Stampin' Up. It's actually an online exclusive. As far as I know, it's still in stock. Um, oh, we let's 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 remove the comments or the banner, Susan. Mm, I'm so bad at that. There we go. That's better. Um, and then uh, before the video, I'd actually made this one with ribbon at the base instead. And then the card does open so you can write inside. Um, someone asked me in the last video, so you see how it's it kind of, um, it, it can kind of get wide um, depending how well you crease it at the top and, and, and it can kind of do the spread thing. Someone asked me if instead of having this piece short like this, if you extended it all the way down, would would it stand up a little bit better? Or maybe maybe not stand up better, but have a less spread, if that makes sense. Um, like, you know, this one, you can tell I've got it scored a little bit better. And so it stands up a little bit. But if I press on it, it's going to widen out. So we're going to try it tonight. We're going to see if, that's, um, if that is a workable idea. 
So we're going to make a not Christmas because <laughs> it's July, right, friends? It's July. We're going to make a um, post up full card that is, uh, you know, something that we could use for other things. I have a cord in my way that's not make me happy. It needs to go away. Okay, too many cords. Um, all right, so we've got options. I don't know, friends. What should we use tonight? I've got, I'm going to give you two choices, and I'm going to have you uh, let me know. We can do the inked and tiled along with the uh, inked botanicals designer series paper, or we can play with a new with a set that's new to me uh, was new in the catalog that I haven't played with at all. So we'll just figure it out together, or hardly at all. Um, and that is the textured floral bundle. So let me know in the comments if we're doing inked and tiled or textured floral. And that will, uh, you know, we'll go with whatever you pick. And while you're voting for that, I'm going to get out a paper cutter here. Yeah, I found it. Take a sip, everyone. Mm, so good. Textured floral seems to be pretty popular. I'm guessing mango peach was what was in somebody's cup. <laughs> um, okay, textured floral it is. All right, you guys are brave. <gasps> We're going to experiment together. So nerve-wracking, right? Um, so what do I want to do? All right, so let's, let's pull this out. These are the dyes. Super fun. Lots of, this one looks like eucalyptus to me. This one's leaves. This one's like little tiny leaves. So three different what I call standalone dies in that they don't match a stamp set. And then this one that is like, um, oh, what do you call it? The stamen, the center of a flower. And then some that match the stamps. Let's bring in our stamps here. So we've got, um, I assume this one matches that maybe. Um, so these different stamp images and leaf images that match up with these. So, I don't know what color I want yet. So I think we're gonna start with some stamping. Let's do it. Here's a big old piece of paper. And my stamp cushion. So I have this, these solid stamps. And I was playing with this one a little bit before I went live. And I was much happier with the image if I used the, um, Oh, Jennifer, what are these called? The brushes. Ah, uh, that's not what they're called, Susan. Um, um, um. Um, um, um. The, uh, oh, gosh. Oh, it's tough to get old, guys. <laughs> I can't think of the name of anything tonight. I'm going to grab some brushes out here. Um, these are, what are they called, Jennifer? Oh, my goodness. Blending brushes? Okay, Myrtle, that, that works. Let's go with blending brushes. Thank you, Myrtle. Um <laughs> So I'm at blending, blending. You guys are, oh yeah, Jennifer's got the page number for us. Look at that. Awesome. So these are the blending brushes. So let me just show you the difference here. I'm going to use my boho blue and I'm going to ink up the stamp. Now these stamps are, note the name, textured floral. So we have a textured stamp on here. And if I just ink it up and stamp it, um, I get some textures, but it's, it's, it's a little darker and blobbier, <laughs> blobbier. Is that a word that that's what it looks like. And that might, you, uh, you know, that might be great depending on your project. If you want a softer look though, you can take the blending brushes. Now we've got the mini and we've got the regular sized. Um, doesn't really matter. Um, if you wanted to do, um, uh, like a darker middle, you might want to do the little ones so that you can, um, Kind of customize a little bit. So let's see the difference of just using the blending brushes to ink that up. So you see, I get a much softer look. Now, for some people, that might be too soft. Um, totally fine. We can also take, ooh, ooh, knocking things over. Craziness here. We can take another blue. This is the uh, navy I have on here, although I think I've also used it for boho blue. <laughs> And so we can do some, um, this is probably backwards. I should have the, the little one in Navy and the, the big one in the boho, but I'm going to just put a little bit in the center 
and stamp and see what that looks like. So that gave me a darker middle. Um, I think I would want maybe a little bit bigger here. So do you ever do this where you take a scrap paper and when the first time you get a stamp set, you do a little playing um, with the image to kind of see what you like and, and how it's going to work for you before you go right to a card? Or maybe you just go, maybe you're brave and you just go right to the card. So I'm going to do a bigger area of maybe in the center of this because I like that. It was just a little bit smaller than I wanted. So that's, ooh, that's nice. So lots of options here um, with these flowers. And that, that's another way to ink it up. You can also use a sponge dauber if you like that softer look. Um, you could ink it up a full and then at, use the blending brush to go over it. Um, let's see what that would look like. So I'm going to ink it up full here. I'm going to take the blending brush that's in the darker color and kind of go over it. And I'm kind of spreading that ink out so it's not blobby <laughs> and adding maybe a little bit of darker ink in. And that's it, you know, still a little blobby to me. Um, see what I mean by blobby? It's, it's very textured. And again, it depends on your project and, and if that's to your taste or not. So there's a little bit of playing with options on this flower and you often test new images too. Yeah. Remove the banner. Oh, heavens. Heavens to Betsy. There we go. <laughs> better. Yeah. Better, better. So these are all options. Like I can see doing this in pinks or um, yellows or, you know, you can get different kind of variations of color there with your, your blending brushes and so forth. So, that's a little bit of playing with that. Um, you know what? I got one more spot here. Um, I'm going to just see if I can come up with a one that I really like. So far, this one's my favorite. I think I just got, oh, look, got my whole thumb in there. Mm, I think I need to take a drink for that one. <laughs> I found some ink on my thumb. Take a sip, everyone. Hmm. Oh my God, I forgot a whole ice cube with that one. Mm, crunch, crunch. All right. Let me get a little bit of the darker around the edges and some in the center. So this one's going to have a fair amount of navy on it with the, the boho all over. And I'm going to press that on. You'll notice I have the um, stamp and pierce mat underneath. This is a clear stamp set. So it does... Um, pick up, uh, um, it does get a better impression with a solid stamp like this if you've got this cushion under it. So out of these, I got to get this off my finger or we're going to have problems. Hang on. <laughs> Fortunately, I've got a paper towel over here. Okay, at least I blotted it so they don't make any too big of messes. So let's put this aside. I think, I think we're going to go with a white card base tonight. You can do a lot with a white card base, right? So let's bring in the white. I am actually going to go with the thick white. I'm going to close. <laughs> I'm going to close this ink pad before I have a little disaster. If that would be wise. And let's go in here and do some cutting. So we're going to cut our card base at uh, four and a quarter by eleven. Get little scraps of designer paper stuck in my trimmer. Oh my goodness, here, we don't want that. All right, so I've got my thick basic white scored um, or cut at four and a quarter by 11th, which is the whole length of the paper here in the North America market. And we're going to score it now. Did I do that wrong? No, I did that right. Okay, I'm going to score it at one inch. I am in the midst of getting ready for Crafter Noon. So Crafter Noon is my monthly class. It'll be a public video. Anyone can tune in and join us. And anyone who placed a $50 uh, order in my online store, $50, $50 or more last month, uh, will get a packet uh, this month to make the card along with me. And it's always a fun fold. I try to come up with uh, unique fun folds or twists on fun folds. And so I've got our new fun fold created. 
and the make and take designed and I've got measurements and <laughs> when I create these fun folds I get a piece of scrap paper and I just start cutting and folding and seeing what I like all right so we scored it at one we scored it at two and now we're going to score it at six and a half this is for the um, the base of the card all right and then now we're going to do the tented portion now in our last video our tented portion was uh, two and a half by eight and a half. This time we're going to try extending it and making it longer and we'll see what we think. So this is two and a half. Why is my scoring blade in the way? There we go. By 11. All right. And we're going to score this at five and a half. Slide the cutting blade out of the way so I don't get in trouble. Right? All right. So let's look at this. So this is our card base. If I zoomed out a little bit, there we go. So I'm going to fold on the, so this we scored at six and a half, which is in this card, it's the middle. I know it's not the middle, but it will be when we fold these guys. So the one that is the, Got the biggest space on both sides. We're going to fold that one. Just uh, that'll be a mountain fold, like so, because that's where the card's going to stand up. And the front two score lines, I realize you can't really see those right now, um, are going to be accordion folded. So this one is going to be folded up. So it's a valley fold. So we have a mountain, we have a valley. We'll give that a good crease with our bone folder. And we're going to fold down the front piece. So another mountain fold. So again, this was the one inch, the two inch mark, and then the six and a half inch mark for the tent for our, the base for our card. Okay. And then we're going to go with this tented part. And uh, was there a question I missed, Jennifer, from Mary? Not finding it. So let me know if... Uh, you have any questions there all right we're gonna go ahead and uh, fold this in half this was the two and a half by 11 piece and this is going to tent all the way over our card so we're going to do it full length here um, in the the one that i've always made it's a shorter piece and it ends up here because it kind of doesn't matter but we're going to see if by doing it full length if that gives the card more stability and keeps it from spreading open as much. Um, I don't want to stick it on yet because we've got some decorating to do, right? So let's bring this back in. And I got different. That's it in navy. That's nice. Oh, this is okay. Where was our this is what I was playing with before I went live. Um, so this this is just solid ink here. This is with the sponge. This is, I think, stamped off. Um, and I, I do like the soft, for this card, I like the softer look of the sponge. I like this one that was boho with a little bit of navy in the middle. So that's the one I'm going to die cut out. Lots of flowers. <laughs> lots and lots of flowers here. And so I'm just, I'm going to get rid of the rest of this. Wait, which one did I like? Oh, maybe I like that one better. Mmm, decisions, decisions. Okay, let's bring in the die cutting machine here and see what we've got. All right, push that over. Where are you? There we go. All right, sorry, I have a messy desk. <laughs> and I need to slide some things over to make room for this. So, all right. I think I like this one better, friends. So we're gonna go with that. Uh, as soon as I find what I did with the dies. Mm. Oh, found them, here they are, under the Stampin' Pierce mat. Of course they are, of course they are. All right, so we're gonna go ahead. I don't know, which one do you guys like better? The one on the top or the one on the bottom? Let me know in the comments. And while you are voting on that, I'm gonna pull out this die and just debating if I want to do any other flowers here what I want to do I want to keep this kind of simple um, 
Let's see here. Either one. Top, top, top. Bottom, bottom. I'm seeing a few more for the top, probably because it's a little bit darker and stands out a little bit more. So let's go with that. I think you're right. Either one is not a bad, uh, you can't go wrong, right? Let me just see. I have a lot of scraps over here on the side. You might have a similar situation in your craft room. Uh, we're gonna start with this. Right. I'm gonna put this top plate on and send this through. Right. So we've got our flower here. Let's just throw the dies around, Sue. <laughs> sure, I can do that. All right, and then we have this pretty piece. Oh, look how pretty that is. It's just, it's leaves, but I did it in white because it kind of reminds me of like baby's breath or it's just a very delicate look, which I really like. Um, and then I think I might want some leaves here. Mm. Let's try these leaves. They look, to me, they look like a eucalyptus kind of deal. And if I can get them off, like I swear this, this tape on the... <laughs> On these cardboard is very strong tape. I don't know. I don't have any kind of tape like that in my house, but I wish I did because man, it really, it really holds things together. So I'm going to do these in. Mm, we're going to try them in boho. So I've got. I'm going to a couple different colors here. So let me grab. something here. Let's see. Um, I think is this what I was looking for? Uh, I just want to see what this would look like. So this is some specialty paper. And it's in the end colors and it's called Luster. Do you see how it's got that pretty shimmer? So I might do, let me just see what this looks like. You can see the shimmer, it's two-sided. And I'm gonna just see what this would look like here with my, um, let's try this in leaves and see what we think, okay? Or we could use regular cardstock. That's always an option. So I'm going to cut a piece of this off so that we can die cut it. Oh, man. Anyone see what I did with my ruler? I just had it. Oh, here it is. Found it. Take a sip, everyone. I have discovered my ruler. So my die is about two inches wide at the widest point. So I'm going to cut a two-inch strip here. Bear with me. I'm going to do it over here because I've got all my space taken up. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hang on. I have a messy craft room, you guys. Oh, my goodness. All right. So we've got a two-inch piece cut there. And let's put on this top plate. Let's see what this does for us. keep this at the ready because I don't think we're done with it but put it aside for now let's see what we're let's see what we've got here and that's really pretty so we've got the leaves we've got that we could even oh it's so pretty okay we could even bear with me here let me throw this idea at you. Let's see if we cut a little middle uh, stamen or whatnot for the flower. I, I may not like it. We may not. We may decide it's too much, but we're going to give it a go. And then we're going to do a little bit of embossing. All right. So bring this back in. And you know what? As long as I'm cutting this, I might want another white uh, thingy. Hang on. 
white thingy. Uh, by white thingy, I mean leaves. <laughs> did I get a tidbit on this? I think I did. A bunch of these scraps from another project just hanging out on my desk, waiting to be used. So I did a little um, today on my Sue Stampfield Facebook group. We were talking about uh, when you make cards. And we were talking about if you make, if you just sit down and make one card, or if you sit down and make multiple cards. I was just curious uh, what people usually do. And almost everyone said they make multiples. And I thought that was really interesting. I like to make multiples, but I often actually end up sitting down and making just one card. And then while I'm making that card, I come up with some ideas that I want to try next time. <laughs> and then I come back later and make that second set. I don't even know if we're going to use that other um that other pretty, uh, pretty leafy thing, but this is what the, uh, the luster paper looks like with the boho blue. It's what it would look like as the center to the flower. Not sure we need it. It's okay. Kind of covers up my pretty dark uh, ink in the center. So I'm, I'm up in the air on that one. All right. So we're going to go ahead and do a little embossing here. So that would require an embossing folder, Susan. Why, well, yes. Why, well, yes, it would. <laughs> you like the flower center rose? Yeah. Um, I also think um, a navy. It takes you a while to design a card. So you, you, you just make multiples then. Yeah. True. Good point. All right. I just grabbed two embossing folders. They both happen to be standard folders. Let me know in the comments which one we're going to use on our card. This is the countryside blossoms this is the quatrefoil tile um i think either of those would work on this card uh, let's throw in one more option just to be difficult um the brick so brick um tile or blossoms how about that let me know in the comments which one we're going to go with and we're going to need some paper and I am going to need to measure my paper for this. So bear with me. I'm going to bring in a card that, oh, I'm going to drop things on my foot. Excellent. <laughs> this is a card I made quite a while ago. This paper was last year's paper, I think, two years ago. No, last year, I think. Uh, so two and a quarter. I figured I could have figured that out by myself, but I wanted to know how long this one was. Looks like it was probably four and a half. Let's try that. All right. So how are we doing? I'm seeing a lot of brick. All right. Love the new brick folder. It is pretty awesome. All right. We're going to go with the brick. So The brick is a, um, a 3D folder, so I need this gray piece that comes with your die cutting embossing machine. And we don't need the clear plates then, but I need to find what I did with the folder. I showed them to you, so they're nearby. Oh, here it is, found it. Take a sip, everyone. <gasps> oh my goodness. Okay, <laughs> so I'm just gonna grab my paper trimmer. An attempt to cut this on a die cutting machine. Don't try this at home, friends. <laughs> really not the best uh, cutting surface, but you know what? Where there's a will, there's a way, right? All right. And then I have said we were going to try it at four and a half. We can always trim it down if we need to. We just can't make it longer. All right. There we go. We made it work. So let's pop this into the embossing folder. I'm going to have some roses climbing up brick. It's reminding me of my trip to England, uh, Stampin' Up! incentive trip. We stayed a few days afterwards in England and we went to um, Chowton, which is in Hampshire. Chowton is the uh, English manor home of Jane Austen's brother. And it was a great house. It was where she would walk up to go to dinner. And they had a beautiful brick walled garden. That, oh my gosh, you guys, it was amazing. All right. Climbing roses that I don't know what it's called. Espen, where you where the roses are climbing up the wall. Yeah. 
for quality. Like the bush is cut in half or whatever they had it with pears and different things. Okay, I'm rambling. All right. <laughs> so here is our pretty flower right here. We've got those white pieces behind. And we're building up just a lovely card here. We've got our leaves back there in that pretty luster paper. Debating about whether to add these yet. I'm going to kind of wait and see how we go. And I'm realizing I'm going to go more embossing on this. All right, let's bring in our card here real quick. And we're going to work on our design a little bit. So I have this embossed piece that's going to go here. And I think I'd like another embossed strip across the front and possibly embossing on the sides. I think that's going to be better than designer paper, but let's take a look. This is the Countryside Inn embossing paper. It is gorgeous and it has boho blue in it, which we are using in our card. So I'm going to just see what this looks like. Oh, oh, things are sliding. No sliding. There is no sliding. <laughs> so just for, for um, us to use our imagination, I'm going to place that little skinny scrap scrap there. So let me know in the comments if, um, if on the side, if we want to do designer paper or if we want to do um, more of the brick embossing. That's what I did on this card. You can see the side panels are um, embossed as is the piece across the front. So that might be nice to just keep it all white. You know, I love a lot of white space. So while you're voting, I am going to, uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do because I need to know. I need to know what we're doing. Okay, looks like designer paper. I've got um, colors or paper. Uh, DSP white embossed. All right, it looks like right now DSP is in the lead. So let's grab some designer series paper. Grab this one right here. A little scrap on there. And I'm going to go back to my measurements. And so these strips on the side, they are. Last time we did them at four and a quarter by one. You actually can also get away with three fourths inch, I found. All right, what did I do with my paper trimmer? Oh, found it. Ah, I cracked myself up. Oh my goodness, what a messy stamper I am. All right, so I said four and a quarter, right? So let's go ahead and chop this down. I don't know why I love this pattern so much. It's just, it's very calming and peaceful to me. So, okay, there's a one inch piece and a one inch piece. All right, go. Okay, this can be on the sides and let's see what we got going here. So I'm gonna put those pieces on first before I put on the tented piece just because it's easier to do it while it's um, flat and <laughs> you know I like white embossed I know I do can I throw spanner embossed ink and ink blended on top for bottom strip I'm not sure uh, Zana what you mean um hang on where did my Oh, guys, I lost my adhesive. Hang on. Oh, dear. I cut the bunny. I cut the bunny's head off. It was an accident. Couldn't see that side. We're not using that side. So it's okay. It's all good. No bunnies were harmed in the making of this video. <laughs> all right. We got our, our uh, paper here. I don't know. These kind of remind me of like, like I would love um, sheets actually for my bed, this color. <laughs> They're just very crisp and clean and linen looking and peaceful and I don't know. that probably makes no sense but that's what they make me think of All right. and there is something to be said about the card and the feeling that it it um, creates I guess for you and the person receiving it you know when we do a sympathy card we do different colors than we do for a birthday card typically. So there we have our, um, our 
base and I think we can go ahead now and do some sticking here of the tent onto the base. So I'm going to get some <laughs> tear and tape. Hang on. It's on my desk. I just have to dig it up. Here it is. I see it peeking out from under a, pi a pile of dyes. <laughs> Take a sip, everyone. Oh, Jennifer, what are we up to? Mm. At the end of this video, I will show us uh, on screen the dimensions. So you said bottom strip going across being embossed and perhaps use some ink blended to make the embossing pop. Ah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, that would be pretty. You could even ink right on the embossing folder. But I'll probably leave it white because, you know, that's how I roll. <laughs> Plus, I want the flower to be the focal point. So, yeah, many options, right? So many options. All right. I'm going to go here and I'm going to, when you attach your tented piece, you do want to have this accordion folded up. And right now I'm just attaching it. Um, you can either attach it to the front or the back first. Let's do the front first. And I'm just centering it here approximately don't get out the ruler just eyeball it if the recipient gets out a ruler to see you know what they yeah they won't <laughs> all right so we've got that adhered and now we're going to adhere the second one you do want to do these um separately because we tried them together for some reason it buckles i don't know why it just does so do one side first then do the other i don't know that it matters which side all right. Gosh, I hope we like our card, you guys. All right. <laughs> oh, okay, so we're going to accordion fold this up, and we're going to straighten it up. Yeah, I think, Santa, if we had done it, like, we could have done that on the background, too, embossing, like, had sponged on the brick embossing folder in blue, too. So there we have the, the whole extended panel unlike this one that was a portion of the panel and it does add it adds a little more heft to the card um i don't know that it's going to keep it um, from spreading a little bit but it's not going to go flat that's for sure um, i did use the thick basic white um, so i probably could stand to do a little better job of creasing here which is going to make your card just stand up nicer and of course when you send it in the mail it's going to get creased really good right <laughs> And I go see those post office machines, it's going to get um, really creased. So, all right, so there we go. And now we're going to put that embossed panel on the front right here. So that was just four and a quarter. That's just the upper portion. And we're going to put some seal on here. This is so exciting. I don't know what our card's going to look like when we're done because I haven't seen this. Someone asked me once if I could show the card before we start. Um, I usually don't know what it's going to look like, so I can't really do that. <laughs> Sometimes I do, but not today. All right, so we've got our pretty leaves. We're going to start with this one. So I um, I am going to put this on with a dimensional. I'm just going to kind of play around with where I want it. I think right there is good. And so I don't want the whole thing to stick down. I like that it kind of curls up off the paper and adds some texture. I don't want it to be totally flat. If you do, you could put some um, multi-purpose liquid glue behind it. That would be um, great. So I've got that on there and then I'm going to add in this on top of that dimensional right there. So just kind of building that up. And then let me know in the comments if you want to add in our second um, sprig here. So just say yes or no for the second piece on whether we're adding that in or not. Just say yes or no. I've got the dimensional, the grenade pin is pulled out of the grenade here. I'm going to put it back on the sheet though. And um, we can stick that on as well. And then this, we're going to add some more dimensionals for this one. Oh, it's a big debate here. <laughs> yes, no, yes, no, yes, 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 no, yes, yes. Okay, it looks like more, a few more yes. Oh, it's pretty evenly split. I think uh, we can go either way. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to go on there. We're going to throw that baby on there. 
just make it extra lacy and pretty. Fortunately, when you make the card, you know, I don't know, maybe I don't like that. It is a little, covers up my leaves a lot. Mm, let me think about this. Try it again here. Maybe go a little bit wider out so it's not, I don't want to totally obliterate those blue leaves. They're pretty. But I also don't, I can't have this extend beyond the edge or it's not going to go in the envelope. Yeah, it's a little too much, isn't it? All right, we're going to pull it off. All right, I, I'm going to go with the nose on this one. Sometimes you just got to stick it on the card and try it, right? Do you do that? Where you don't think you're going to like it and then you put it on there and go, yeah, kind of do. All right, so I've got two more dimensionals added here because this one is kind of covered up with my leaves. And I'm going to add just another one on here because you just can never have too many dimensionals, right? All right, so that piece goes on there. And then we could add this little, um, is it a stamen? Is that what the name is? Um, we could add that. I'm going to say no on that. Um, I think I'm going to leave that off. All right, so now we've got this piece right here, the front of our card, which we could add designer series paper to. Uh, we'd probably go with the pattern going in the same direction as the sides, but just to um, get a gander on that. So we could do that. We could go with some ribbon. Where's my ribbon fans? go with some ribbon across the front that almost seems too dark that is the boho blue but this is also soft it's almost like too dark to me and we have more options here that one's the wrong color blue though um we could go with this one or we can go with an embossed piece i'm kind of i don't know that's i think that's too too gaudy <laughs> Oh, we have this one. Oh, hang on. Hold the phone. This is the new herringbone ribbon. Mm, it's white. Very pretty. Let's see what that would look like. It's a bit wide. It's a bit wide. I'll try it. It's easy to slide off if we change our mind, right? I do like ribbon. You guys know I do, but I'm kind of thinking embossed piece or the designer paper is probably the way to go, but let's just try it. Pardon me while I just play around with creating here. It also would kind of depend on what the occasion was, right? If it was maybe a wedding, then maybe ribbon would be the way to go versus um, a birthday. So that's what the ribbon looks like. Of course, we would, boy, I cut a lot of ribbon, didn't I? <laughs> Way more than I needed. So let me know in the comments. There's the ribbon. Or we can do embossing or DSP. So let me know in the comments if we're going to do ribbon, embossing, or DSP to for across that front piece. And let's just kind of tidy up here. I think I might need some words in my card color the ribbon that's certain embossed piece ribbon no <laughs> dsp uh oh no for the center i think is what they were saying yeah ribbon 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 all right looks like we're going with the ribbon the ribbon looks good they say all right we're gonna go with the ribbon on this and then we can do an inside uh greeting here so um we can use the one that's in the set, so why not? Let's do it. And we have, uh, with a grateful heart, birthday blooms for you. Make every, every thought of you makes me smile, which those two actually could go together. I'm going to go with birthday blooms because I always need birthday cards. Now, I think it's a little bit bigger than it shows on the front. Let's find out here. Birthday blooms for you. Yeah, it is. It is bigger than it shows. Sorry, I was off camera there. It's bigger than it shows on the front. So that's good. How did my camera get way over there? <laughs> Sorry, guys. Oh, goodness. Just because of the wild stamping and bumping into it and going crazy and stuff. All right. 
and you know you know i'm probably going to want to add some gems on here all right let's um ink this up in good old boho blue I call it old when it's a brand new color good boho blue we have lots of great new colors in the catalog um i know a lot of my customers um will buy the stamp pad the ink and the paper every month they'll get maybe one new set of colors or maybe two and that way they can slowly build up their collection without having to buy them all in one go so there we have the birthday blooms now i think it would be really nice to just add a little bit of the designer paper on the inside too i'm not going to worry about what direction the pattern goes because they're not going to see this from the outside but i just think it adds a nice little something something on the inside so let's add that in too and then let's add some sparkle to the front because we can. And I know not everybody likes the gems and that's totally cool because, um, you know, you can make the card. If, if you don't like the way I'm making it, that's all right because you have your own things and you can say that would have been really great if she had done this. And then I hope you go and give it a try, right? Try out your idea and see what it looks like. If you're going to email a picture, that would be awesome. All right, so there we have just a really pretty lacy card. I'm going to try out some gems and just see if we like it or if we think it's too much here. So I've got my Take Your Pick tool. I've got some iridescent rhinestones that I just grabbed out of the drawer. I don't like that. Too pink, too, but I don't know, too much. Too, 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 too something. Uh, hang on. All right, I'm going to grab these sequins, and these are the sequin trio. If he said back sequin trio is the full name, I um, really love these. The nice thing about sequins is they're very low profile, um, and so they're not going to make your card lumpy, uh, but they have that built-in um, sticky on them, which makes them super easy to work with. Uh, so we've got that. That's one option. Um, actually, don't know if I even want it on the flower. I might want it around here. Um, put that up there. Could do just one in the middle. No, I don't even like it in the middle. Hmm. Maybe down here. Yeah, I kind of like that with just, it's very subtle, but this is kind of a subtle card. So. All right, I'm going to go with that. So I've got the iridescent, uh, no, what are these called? Mm, let's look on the back, too. Adhesive back sequin trio. Hey, I had that right. Another option is, if you don't like that, um, okay, maybe I can't show you the other option because it's hiding from me right now. Oh, for the love of Pete. Come on, where are you? Oh, goodness. Uh, I might have pulled them out to use them on a different project and then decided to not use them, and now they didn't where I want them. Look at there. Right here. Right here. Right here. All right. These are the neutrals adhesive sequins. So we've got a lot of metallics here. We've got a bronze, a copper, and a gold. But we also have a white, where these white ones are from the adhesive back trio, um, sequin trio, are kind of, um, let's see if I can zoom up there kind of iridescent. These are more of a solid white. So, you know, it just kind of depends on your preference. Um, and then these you get um, the small and the large, just like you do in the other ones. And that's, you can see it's less, um, it actually shows up a little bit better because it's um, less see-through. What is that? Opaque? Less translucent? Maybe opaque is not see-through. <laughs> So there we have our card. Super pretty birthday blooms for you. And that is using the textured floral bundle and the matching dies and the countryside blooms paper. And then to do our, our stamp, we actually use the blending brushes to give our stamps a little bit softer look and to do that two-tone color in there on our card. I'm going to clean up my mess here a little bit and put up the measurements. Let's move the dimensional paper out of the screen. Let's shrink out just a little bit here. 
maybe we go like this. No, we'll go like this. <laughs> Let's find my banner here, friends. So you can take a screenshot and go make this card. Now this um, particular uh, fold will be um, coming out in the next project sheet. So I'll show you where to sign up for that in just a minute. Um, I do have the option of doing the designer paper. If we had gone that route for across the bottom, it would have been three fourths by four. We did not do that. And we didn't use an inside piece because we ended up with a white card base. So we didn't actually need the inside piece for this. So in case you're wondering, and let me just hold still. There we go. And now I'm gonna hide that. And go back to comments here. I said found it six times. How about that? So if you would like to get uh, the free project sheet for the um, faux step fold card, and I'll do both versions, the Christmas version and this version, you can sign up right here, right here. <laughs> so you see on fill.com, click on subscribe. Thank you so much for hanging out with me tonight. I hope you're able to go and create some pretty cards and most importantly, send them off to someone who, who needs a paper hug in the mail. Take care, everyone. Thanks for joining me tonight and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Oh, and Crafternoon is coming up. It will be on the 24th this month in case you're curious. So that's not this coming Saturday, but the following Saturday. Have a great night. Bye-bye.